So in order to find the element in the calculator, the first thing we need to do is to download the uh, WinApp recorder. As you can see here, the WinApp driver UI recorder, or you can use the Windows kit to inspect the element as well. I guess the Windows Kits inspect tool is very, very handy to work with. So I will quickly show you how to use that because since it's in RC state, there are some kind of bugs and it always breaks and it takes a lot of resource in your machine. So I'm just going to go all the way to my C colon and I'm going to go to the program files. And then if you search for something called as Microsoft Windows Kits, this one, the Windows Kits folder. And if you go to Windows 10, the 10 is representing the Windows 10. Uh, if it is 8.1, it is Windows 8.1. So I'm going to go to the 10 and then go to the bin folder. And here you can choose any build of your choice. The build version I have is like different builds. So I'm just going to take the last one and let's go to the x86. And here you can search for inspect. So this is the exe file, just very, very handy. And I probably like this a lot because you can see this tool itself is very lightweight and it does the job very well. So I'm just going to open the calculator and you can see that the calculator window just appeared here. So this is kind of very, very cool. So let me make this a little smaller so that we can see this in the whole screen. There we go. And now if I want to work with this calculator, you can see that the calculator window has been selected here. And if I just scroll down a little bit, you can see this is the uh, calculator screen. This is the menu button. This is a standard calculator more text that I can see. I can also use this show highlighted rectangles. So I can select that. You can see it shows which one it is selecting. And then if I go here to the nine and you can see it brings all the buttons of that. So it brings the number pad group zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if I hit equals, you can see that it shows the equal button plus minus multiply by divide by. So everything, you don't even have to do a recording here. Basically, whatever action that you perform here, it just brings in all the button informations for you. And it shows you a little bit highlighted so that it will be very, very handy for you to work with. So you can see that the automation ID of this particular button is uh, num5 button. And it is a XAML uh, application, which is nothing but UWP application. So I'm just going to take the uh, the automation ID. I can also use the name, uh, which is nothing but five, something like that. So this is the name. You can see that the legacy I accessibility ID is actually five here, which is the name. So I can use that. So let's go here. So now that we know what it is, so I'm just going to minimize them. And here I can use this wind driver object and then I can use this find element. And you can see it brings the whole lot of things that we used with the Appium and Selenium. Just nothing but find element by XPath or CSS or class, name, partial link text. Well, these are all the methods which are completely missing in Code UI testing. And now that we can able to do all of these options using Windows application driver. Very, very cool. So I'm just going to choose the name and I'm just going to put the name as five. And then if I hit dot, you can see it is fluent right now and that's why it, it could still able to drill down into that element and you can still do a lot of operations. So for instance, if your element is sitting within one element, so you can still do a fluent drill down and then you can get into that element to perform that operation. That's cool. And this is pretty much like Xamarin.UI test which Microsoft has inspired with and that's why they have brought this fluent way of doing it. And again, this is something not available either in Appium or in Selenium C Sharp, but it is currently available just for this driver. So now I'm just going to do an operation here. It's nothing but the click. I'm just going to save it. And now I'm just going to run this. So basically I'm going to close this browser completely. And I want the file to be clicked here. And I'm going to build this solution. And let's try to run the selected test. So this time it should open the calculator for me. And there we go to click the file. Very fast. So I know what is the other operations, like uh, the name of them, like six, seven, eight, something like that. I can just type and see if it really works. And let's try to run this course. So I'm going to close this calculator completely and I'm going to run this. Let's see what's going to happen. There we go. It opened the calculator. It's entering all the value plus, wow, that's cool. So you can see that this is really, really faster than a coded UI, isn't it? The code itself is very, very small. And you can see that we just identify all the element with the name. 
and we just pass the name of the element and we could be able to identify all these element without any problem. So you can run the same code even with Visual Studio Community Edition, Visual Studio Code, and even with the most costliest Visual Studio Enterprise Edition if you want, and it doesn't matter, and it's kind of free, so you can use it without any problem, not like code or UI testing. So that's it guys, this is how you can write a very super simple code with Windows App Driver. Starting our next video, we'll talk about page object models and how you can write the same kind of code with page object model fashion, Followed by that, we'll also see how we can write the code in SpecFlow so that we can build the same kind of structure that we use to build with our code or UI testing framework. That's it guys. Once again, thank you very much for watching this video. Talk to you in our next video.